I just wanted to put together some clips on how to take some nursing vitals in case you haven't gotten to experience it for yourself or you just wanted some clarification. I am a second semester nursing student at Hopkins. So is my friend Amanda. Um, we did pass our sign offs. Also, I worked as an EMT um, and we just wanted to show you how to take vitals. But yes, yeah, we're going to head right on into it. We'll start with temperature, but just so you guys know, I'm getting these normal ranges from the Hopkins Medicine website just because there is some variation between textbooks and classes. So keep that in mind, but this is the range I'm going with. Just so you know, the normal range for temperature is 97.8 Fahrenheit to 99 degrees Fahrenheit. There are different ways for you to record temperature. You could use an oral thermometer rectal axillary but today we're gonna use temporal all you're gonna do is rest it against the forehead and you just press it and it will find out for you so 97.6 she's in a great range she is healthy now that we've gotten temperature we want to go ahead and get your heart rate and your respiratory rate now with this you want to make sure you have a watch on you actually Apple watches are fine with clinicals for us as long as you have a second hand on there somewhere so you're able to change screens so make sure you get one that has that second hand to make it a little bit easier um, but the heart rate you want it to be 60 to 100 beats per minute and for your respiratory rate 12 to 20 now when getting the heart rate and feeling for the pulse usually it's easiest to just go with radial so what you want to do is line up their thumb and then you follow it back and right about here is where you should be able to feel their pulse you want to use two fingers and you want to use the pads of your fingers so you hold it onto there and you can start counting now you feel you count for 30 seconds and once you have that value, you can just double that, multiply that by two. It's easiest to also combine with your respiratory rate. So if you tell someone, hey, I'm gonna check out your breathing now, they're probably gonna freak out a little bit and be like, oh, you're watching my breathing? Like, and they're gonna change how their breathing pattern is. So I would recommend that while you're already here and you're getting their pulse, that you also now switch over and watch their shoulder movement or just look for their body movement in general that they're breathing and that way you can get their respiratory rate along with the heart rate but also if they're able to speak in full sentences you know that their respiratory rate is going to be good <laughs> and that they're fine <laughs> but yeah it can be a little difficult at first when you're trying to like low-key stare at someone but not stare at them when they're breathing so um, another way is if you put a hand on their shoulder or a hand on their back. You can actually feel the movement of her shoulders going up and down. And so that might be an easier way for you to discreetly try to get both of those vitals at the same time. So we spoke about the heart rate being between 60 to 100. We also have tachycardia and bradycardia. Now bradycardia is when your heart rate is below 60. And tachycardia is when your heart rate is over 100. Now, those things are not inherently bad on their own. It all depends on context. So if someone's heart rate is below 60, but they're an athlete and they train like daily all the time, their heart rate is going to be inherently lower than some other normal people. Whereas if you had someone who just sprinted off the bus to run into the ER and their heart rate is high, like around 110 or something, that's normal. They just ran here. It's not um, a risk in of itself that those vitals are high or low. So having context is really, really important. The next part we are going to talk about is blood pressure. So for this, you definitely need to get your blood pressure cuff out and of course your stethoscope. Um, with your cuff, you want to make sure that you have the right size for your patient. So right now I have the adult size, which is perfect for Amanda, but note that there are different sizes and the peds ones, oh my gosh, they're so cute and so small. <laughs> but yeah, definitely get one that fits your patient um, well, otherwise you won't get an accurate reading. That's really important. You want to make sure to uh, first feel for the brachial pulse and then be able to uh, put the blood pressure cuff on to line it up with it because there's actually a spot for you to line it up. So if you see, this spot is where you would line up for the artery. So you want to make sure to palpate for it first and then put it on for your patient. Okay. Now that you've got it on nice and snug, you want to make sure to still palpate it and that it's still there, it's still good. You want to make sure to clip this in a spot where you can easily read the gauge on here. So I like to clip it um, either onto their gown or their clothing underneath just so that it's in a place that's easily able to be read. The first thing we're actually going to go and get is the oscillatory gap. This is really important because sometimes your patient has an oscillatory gap, meaning that it skips um, or there's nothing that you hear in that moment so you might miss the first value, the systolic value. So getting the oscillatory gap will ensure that you don't miss anything. 
So to do that, you first want to palpate for the brachial pulse again. What you're going to do is you're going to make sure to close this and you're going to pump. And when you feel that there's no more pulse there, that's when you know that that's the value that you got to keep in mind. So first we're going to get that value. So I'm going to go for it here. Okay, and then start pumping. For Amanda, that was 120. So what I'm going to do is pump to 150. So whatever value that you get for your patient, you're going to add 30 on top of that. And that's the number that you're going to pump to when you're getting that blood pressure. The first sound that you hear, that is going to be your systolic sound. When you record, the blood pressure will be systolic over diastolic. So the first sound you hear is systolic. The final sound that you hear when it's tick, 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 and then it just stops and it takes off that sound is going to be your diastolic sound so what you're going to do is pump to that value so like we said earlier for amanda that's 150 so what i'm going to do is pump to 150 and then i'm going to slowly very slowly release the valve so that it's open so not very much just barely opening it and it's going to slowly let the air out the first sound you hear that'll be your systolic value right, the second value which is the very very last sound you hear that will be your diastolic sound and then you just record it as so the last thing you want to do before you get the blood pressure is make sure that your patient is sitting down that they're relaxed they didn't just have any caffeine or food they didn't just eat um, that their legs are not crossed and that they're in a relaxed position essentially. So once that is done, then you can go ahead and get your blood pressure. So what you wanna do is you wanna put on your stethoscope, give it a tap, make sure you're listening to the right side, which I am, <laughs> I felt that one. Then you're gonna stick it under here, under the cuff. And it's easiest if you hold the sides so that you're not blocking the pulse like walking listening to her pulse and listening to your fingers instead so yeah make sure you're holding it down with that and then we're going to close that valve we're going to pump up to 150 because that's the number that we found for amanda with the oscillatory gap and then slowly release The hers is 114 over 76. Normal blood pressure is 120 over 80, but everyone has their own baseline. So making sure to take blood pressure frequently so that you know what your baseline is also really important. I'll leave a chart up here actually so that you guys can see when you would be considered um, in the pre-hypertensive category, hypertensive category, whatnot. The last nursing battle we're going to talk about is apical pulse. So you're probably wondering why do you want to get the apical pulse? Now, this is really important because it is the easiest and most non-invasive way to get an accurate reading of cardiac function essentially and so it can let you know if you have any sort of sinus arrhythmia or anything like that this is something that you'll see a lot especially in peds just because their heart rate can be very irregular so let me show you how to do this with this it would be the left mid clavicular line in the fifth intercostal space now in a lot of women it's usually right under their breast and so the easiest thing to do with this is to have the patient lift up their breast for you so my wonderful patient has already done so, and I'm going to go ahead and take a lesson. It just takes some practice with uh, making sure that you're in the right spot, but that one I was able to pick up pretty easily with Amanda, but we've already practiced with each other for this mm -hmm. before, for our um, vitals, sign-offs, like first semester. Uh, but with this, you wanna make sure that you're actually listening for the entire minute. So remember earlier when we were talking about getting the heart rate, you can either Listen for 15 seconds, multiply by four, or you can listen for 30 seconds and just double that value. But with this, you wanna listen for the full minute, actually. That was all the nursing vitals that we were going over for today. I hope that you found it really helpful and beneficial. Um, let us know if you have any questions or want clarification on anything, but good luck on your sign-offs. Um, vitals are one of those things where it's like the more practice you have, the easier it gets. I know blood pressure especially can be really intimidating at first, but practice on anyone and everyone that you can. Like grab your sister, grab your mom, whoever it is practice on them and soon enough it'll just be like second nature but yeah let us know if you have any questions on anything and i'll see you guys in the next video